Hello and welcome back to this video looking at the Biology 1.5 Mammals as a Consumer External. In the last video we covered physical digestion and chewing as two of the steps involved in food processing in mammals. In this video we're focusing on step 3, we're going to be looking at chemical digestion. And as part of that we're going to be looking at some specific places within the digestive system. These being the mouth, the stomach, the small intestine, the salivary glands, the pancreas, and of course the gallbladder. In this video, we're going to be covering the what, why, where, and how of chemical digestion. And these are four important points or questions that you should be able to answer and explain at the end of watching this video. So hopefully you'll remember that in the last video we talked about what digestion is overall. And we know that this is the process where mammals take the food that they eat and break it down into a much smaller form so that we can absorb it into the blood and we can use it to make energy. We talked about physical digestion being one form of digestion and the second form is chemical digestion. So an important definition for your exams is this one. We know that chemical digestion is the process in which digestive enzymes in the body break small pieces of food into even smaller pieces of food. Chemical digestion takes the already chewed pieces of food and makes them into the smallest possible unit, and these are called molecules. And we know this makes sense because after all, we don't just eat a hamburger and absorb a whole hamburger from our digestive system into our body. We need to break it down. The first part of this is physical digestion, and that mainly occurs in the mouth where we're chewing the food that we initially eat and making it into smaller pieces, like this. However, these pieces, although are smaller than what we initially ate, are still too big to actually absorb, so we need chemical digestion to make them smaller. And that's where the digestive enzymes involved in chemical digestion come into play. Digestive enzymes are like a pair of chemical scissors. They act to cut up the already chewed pieces of food to break them down into the smallest possible unit that they can. And once this happens, these really small pieces of food are able to be absorbed across the gut and into the bloodstream. So now that we've looked at the what, let's look at the why. We know that as part of chemical digestion, Digestive enzymes are breaking the bonds that hold pieces of food together to make them into much smaller pieces of food. This needs to happen so that the pieces of food are ultimately small enough to be absorbed through the wall of the intestine into our bodies. This is really important because we need the food that we eat to be absorbed so that we can use the nutrients from food for key life processes and some of these are listed here. For the sake of this external, one of the main key life processes we need food for is of course nutrition. So how exactly does chemical digestion work? Well we know that chemical digestion essentially is a series of chemical reactions and these are carried out by those digestive enzymes that we talked about, those pairs of chemical scissors. And they work to break down the large food molecules, also called macromolecules, where macro means large, into really small pieces of food. And these are called micromolecules, where micro means small. So where do these digestive enzymes come from? Well, we know that these digestive enzymes, or these pairs of chemical scissors, are secreted into the digestive system by glands lining the gut. An example of this is, of course, the salivary glands in the mouth. So when we're thinking about chemical digestion, breaking those already chewed pieces of food into smaller pieces of food, the three main groups of food that need to be digested are the carbohydrates, or the sugars, the proteins, and the fats. You may have also heard these being called the lipids. The next few slides contain some really important information and details that you need to remember for your exam. You need to know how the following reactions occur, and you need to be able to name the specific food molecules and enzymes involved. So first of all, let's look at carbohydrates. So essentially, carbohydrates consist of a lot of starch. Starch is a form of polysaccharide, where a polysaccharide simply means a lot of sugars all attached together. Saccharide means sugar, poly means a lot of or many. And you can see this in the diagram here, where there are a lot of hexagons all attached together, where one hexagon represents one sugar. The first reaction involved in the chemical digestion of carbohydrates is the breakdown of starch 
into maltose and sucrose. These are called disaccharides, which simply means two sugars attached together. The breakdown of starch into maltose and sucrose occurs due to the digestive enzyme called salivary amylase. The second step involved in the chemical digestion of carbohydrates is the breakdown of maltose and sucrose into glucose, which is called a monosaccharide. Again, this just means one sugar alone. This reaction is caused by the enzymes maltase and pancreatic amylase. So we can see that through the chemical digestion of carbohydrates, we start with the large form of a carbohydrate called starch, and we eventually break it down to one single unit of glucose, which can then be absorbed. Proteins are the second form of food that need to be chemically digested before we can absorb them. The first reaction involved in the chemical digestion of proteins is the breakdown of proteins into polypeptide chains. Polypeptide chains are simply smaller chunks of a protein. The digestive enzyme involved in this reaction is called pepsin. The second reaction involved in the chemical digestion of proteins is the breakdown of polypeptide chains, those chunks of proteins, into even smaller chunks, and these are called amino acids. And amino acids are the unit that is able to be absorbed across the gut. This reaction is caused by the enzyme called trypsin. Finally, when it comes to looking at the chemical digestion of fats, there's only one reaction to look at, and that's the breakdown of fats, or lipids, into fatty acids and glycerol. Fatty acids and glycerol are then able to be absorbed into the body. This reaction is caused by the enzyme called lipase. So those are the main reactions of chemical digestion that you need to know for your exam. So now that we've looked at how these reactions occur, let's look at where they happen in the digestive system. We know that chemical digestion occurs in three main places, these being the mouth, the stomach, and of course the small intestines. We also know that there are some other parts of the digestive system that are involved. These include the salivary glands and the pancreas, and these are important because these are where those digestive enzymes are produced. Another important organ is of course the gallbladder, and that's because it releases bile. So let's begin first with the mouth. The main form of chemical digestion in the mouth is the first part of carbohydrate digestion. That's the breakdown of starch into maltose and sucrose. And we know that this reaction is caused by the enzyme salivary amylase. What you also need to know is that salivary amylase is in the saliva produced by the salivary glands in the mouth. Now let's look at the stomach. In the stomach, the main form of chemical digestion is the first part of protein digestion and that's the breakdown of proteins into polypeptides. And the enzyme responsible for this is pepsin, as we already know. What you also need to know is that pepsin is produced by these cells called the chief cells, which line the stomach. Finally, moving on to the small intestine. This is where the bulk of chemical digestion occurs, and there are several forms all occurring within the small intestines at the same time. The first of these is the breakdown of maltose and sucrose into glucose, as we talked about, and we know that this reaction is caused by the enzymes maltase and pancreatic amylase. It's important for you to know that pancreatic amylase is produced by the pancreas. The second reaction happening in the small intestine is the breakdown of polypeptides into amino acids. And this reaction is caused by the enzyme trypsin. It's important for you to know that trypsin is produced by the pancreas as well. The final reaction happening in the small intestine is the breakdown of fats into fatty acids and glycerol. Again, we know this reaction is caused by the enzyme lipase, and lipase is produced by the pancreas as well. However, for lipase to work as efficiently as it can to break down these fats into fatty acids and glycerol, a process called emulsification needs to occur. Emulsification simply means the breakdown of one fat globule here into lots of little fat droplets, and this is done with bile. Now it's important to note that bile is released into the small intestine from the gallbladder, and whilst it helps the fat globule become lots of little fat droplets, bile is not a digestive enzyme. However, it does help to emulsify, which just simply means break down, the large fat globule into lots of fat droplets, and you can see that this essentially increases the surface area available. And this helps to improve the digestion of fat by lipase, as it means there's more surface area of the fat droplet for lipase to react with. And that brings us to the end of the video. This is a quick summary of what you now need to know having watched this video. But essentially we've covered the what, 
why, where and how of chemical digestion. We've also looked at the specific reactions involved in chemical digestion and where specifically these occur, and you do need to remember these details for your exam. The next video is looking at digestive enzymes and the role of pH and temperature.